I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African-Americans, but the LGBT community. He wants to get away with, get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, for the ability to, for the... Haven't you been saying for the last couple of years, a bit worried about Joe Biden and whether or not he might have uh, premature, not even premature senility, senility at an appropriate age if ever such a sad and tragic thing could ever be called appropriate and now finally after it was shown live it's being covered in a way it's no different than the reporting around the pandemic or the reporting around the origins of the ukraine russia conflict for a while there's this kind of low hum of what they regard as conspiracy theories and hate speak where people are saying, oh, I'm a bit worried about Joe Biden. That doesn't look right. He's wandered off in the wrong direction. He didn't finish that sentence correctly. He's making up numbers. He can't just say that. All these things about corn pop, none of this stuff makes sense. Then eventually it sort of permeates the sphere of the mainstream. And I can't work out what's happening because their hysteria suggests that it's a natural and organic reaction. And yet it does seem tempting to consider, as Vivek Gramaswamy suggested, along with many others, that the reason that the debates were three months early was precisely to afford them the ability to replace a Joe Biden. And certainly that seems like an increasingly necessary outcome. But when you want reliable reactions, when you want the truth, even if he's not on CNN as much as we'd like, you turn to Brian Stelter. And that's what we're going to do now. You may have turned away from Brian Stelter as I have turned away from sin. But Brian is here for you right here, right now. Look, if you're in a battle between someone who lies really confidently versus someone who mostly tells the truth but really incoherently, the confident liar is always going to win. That's what he's framing this as now, is that the lies of Donald Trump are brilliantly delivered, whereas Joe Biden's lies are falteringly delivered, for surely there was much fact-checking to be had. So part of the legacy media are scrambling to reframe this. We saw Rachel Maddow kind of say that over the course of it, he got stronger and stronger, and by the end of it, he was brilliant and bombastic and rousing and Churchillian. And another portion of the establishment media, but the establishment more generally, are looking at ways to dis. Batch, Joe Biden. And I think many millions of Americans who don't want to see Trump reelected were yelling at their TVs, wanting Biden to fight back harder, wanting to see an actual debate, an actual fight. Uh, they didn't get that. They came away disappointed. And it makes me wonder if there will be any more debates at all. We'll look at how this is being framed over the course of the show. But we posted this on X earlier today. Let's have a look at Joe Biden as he was in just 2019, where I don't remember thinking of him as a particularly garrulous and lucid individual, but it is pretty alarming to see him in 2019 versus now. And when you watch this, I think the important thing to bear in mind, and let me know what you think, is that Joe Scarborough and the New York Times and various other outlets have literally been saying things like he's as sharp as a tack. So forget, like, if you can, Joe Biden, forget the fact that he's a nominally the most powerful man in the world. Forget the fact that he himself makes all sorts of extraordinary claims with motivations that are, who, who knows what personal motivations people have, but perhaps that's forgivable and even understandable. But what's interesting is to see the legacy media attempt to reframe this. How did they not notice it before? And what is it they're trying to do now? Is it all an attempt to produce such a giddy and delirious state that none of us know what reality is anymore. But here's one thing for sure that uh, we can rely on and actually watch in real time. This is the relationship between Joe Biden 2019 versus Joe Biden just last week. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African-Americans, but the LGBT community. He wants to get away with get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability to, for the... I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if...
You will determine the outcome of this election. Vote, vote, vote. If you're able to vote early in your state, vote early. If you're able to vote in person, vote in person. Vote whatever way is the best way for you, because you will. He cannot stop you. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. It's got to the point where even the legacy media are starting to abandon him and rescind their support. He can still rely on a few people, but what are their motivations? When you see Nancy Pelosi, who's a figure that doesn't really inspire a great deal of trust going to bat for Joe Biden, you have to wonder if this cadre of senescence and decay is somehow the living symbol of the decline that we are living through. Elsewhere in the world, the media establishment febrilely describes a lurch to the right as if nationalism and a connection to your land and political figures that talk about that country, your country's interests first, is an understandable response to this kind of peculiar, soulless, vampiric, Nosferatu-style zombie globalism that has no roots, that has no clear human aims, that makes me, at least, consider that some gaseous demonic power has co-opted the world. And on that note... And, uh, you know, while, uh, while he may be saying we're enablers, we see Joe Biden up close. We know how uh, attuned he is. What it was, it was we were too far away from him. If you just get very, very close to your television, you get real near, lean right into that debate, you suddenly realise he's like Oscar Wilde in there. He's firing off the epigrams and the bon mots at a rate of knots. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Are you struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns? The IRS is escalating collections, adding, get this, 20,000 new agents and sending over 5 million collection letters to kick off 2024 to spend on things that you probably don't agree with, like wars and measures and a total lack of infrastructure. In these challenging times, your best defense is... Tax Network USA. Don't let the IRS take advantage of you. With over 14 years of experience, Tax Network USA have saved their clients over $1 billion in back taxes. No matter the size of your tax issue, their expertise is your advantage. They specialize in negotiating with the IRS, aiming to significantly reduce your debt. Tax Network USA doesn't just negotiate, they also protect your assets from IRS seizures and manage your yearly returns for ongoing compliance. Importantly, they are licensed to help you with all state tax issues regardless of where you live in the United States. The clock is ticking. Don't wait as the IRS steps up its game. Seize control of your financial future now. Contact Tax Network USA for immediate relief and expert guidance. Call 1-800-245-6000 or visit taxnetworkusa.com forward slash brand. Don't let tax issues overpower you. Turn to Tax Network USA and find your path to financial peace of mind. Right, let's get back to this content. It can't be distance, Nancy. Is there another reason? He arts to the issues, how informed he is. And I debate with him about uh, legislation and the, not debate, but... Uh, like, oh, imagine seeing Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden debating together. That would be electrifying, wouldn't it? That'd be like Gore Vidal and William Buckley again. Throw James Baldwin into the mix. It would be extraordinary to watch those skills, steel on steel, sharp minds, Sparks are flying. And the real winner, democracy itself. Or the Republic. I know that you have some strong attachments to those words there in your country. And I have some strong attachments to these principles. Authenticity and integrity, decentralization, and the sense that you somehow are tribally, viscerally connected to the way that your community is run. Why should we be forced to conceptualize vast tracts of 333 million people populated nation continents is a difficult thing to bring into your mind and hold together, certainly for Joe Biden these days, and I would imagine for Nancy 
Nancy Pelosi too. And it's only worth undertaking if there's some extraordinary benefit to it. Maybe what we are witnessing now is something more significant than whether or not you should vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump in November or Keir Starmer or, or Rishi Sunak in a couple of days in my country or whoever you're being offered in France. It might be a little more fundamental than that, I sometimes think. Isn't this time for us to summon somehow collectively a new vision? And some of that may yet be arcane and simple, that politics is managerial. Politics is about organisation and logistics. Maybe the vision has to be drawn from our hearts, from our collective spirits. No longer can we perhaps rely on these corporatist, globalist, odd figures to tell us what it is to be an American or a French person or a Chinese person or a Brit or a European. Maybe we can't look to them anymore. Joey Yodo in the chat says, it's not a battle of good versus evil. It's a battle of morality versus amorality. But I suppose, Joey Yodo, from what would morality be derived if not an ontological principle of goodness itself? You can't derive morality from anything other than a universal notion of good unless you're saying local cultural customs that amount to goodness, which are kind of strategic and derived perhaps from evolutionary biology. That's, that's not going to work because I do believe in absolute good and absolute bad. While we're not distracted, but perhaps engaged by watching the media's sort of swirl of confusion, bafflement and repositioning, that we still are edging closer to an apocalypse. There are still regional disputes that are terrifying, breathtaking and galling taking place right now, even as we speak and reflect. And just try not to recall this moment. As they say in these spaces these days, well, this didn't age well. People would ask me, knowing what you know now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where um, I had a, I had a, a stand-in, a front man or front woman, and, and they had an earpiece in, and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff, and then I could sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was... Uh, doing all the talking and ceremony, wow. I, I'd be fine with The actual truth is I'm sure that's a sort of a joke, that it's not a cadre of ex-presidents that runs America, but powerful global corporate interests that for the purposes of corroboration, we can track and look at financial dominion and resource power. We can see how that maps and moves and is maneuvered and who spends money on donations and who spends money on lobbying and who remains wealthy, powerful and influential regardless of which party is in government and which interests donate to both parties. That would be a way of tracking it. You can get into some occultism if you want to. Why not? It's a good enough pastime. But do you really think that it's a, you know, that you saw uh, Donald Trump's Truth Social post the weekend at Bernie's one, I'm sure. I don't reckon that it's actually the Obamas jostling Biden through this. I feel that there's a kind of Democrat Party aristocracy that move through the hierarchies of that party. But where's real power? It's global and it bows not to flags. Maybe it bows to horns. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.